Today, everything's connected. Code, cloud, couch. I can dream up a change to an application, make that change, push it to production, and it's live all without touching a server. That's all done with auto deployment. This is where we actually are today. Let me show you how to get there. Let's take a look using a sample fun application that I built for Thanksgiving. Okay, to make this real, I built a fun, silly, almost ridiculous little game called Turkey Tapper for Thanksgiving. And so I got Claude Code to build that out and let's take a look at it real quick. So here's Turkey Tapper. It's a simple little console kind of application or a really DOS version of game in the old days. And if you play it, then you have to feed your patrons a certain amount of food or they get angry. And once they get angry, they come attack you. And if you drop too many things on the floor, then you have a cat that comes and attacks you and you have to give the cat a fish. A bunch of silliness. It is absolutely ridiculous. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to make a few edits to it because it's not quite production ready, but it's close. So let's take a look at turning this into kind of a production application. Okay, first things first, not surprising. I've pushed this up to GitHub. I now have it up here in my GitHub account. Very simple to do that, obviously. Once it's here though, I wanna make sure that it deploys to a place that I can see it. For that, I've recently moved to Vercel for specifically the reason that I'm about to show you. What you're going to learn here is a way to make sure that your applications can be pushed to production immediately when you make changes to them and approve them on the main branch. Or when you're doing a PR, you can take a look at them in preview mode. And this is really the unlock that I wanted to talk about. To unlock that idea of being able to do true engineering from your couch on your mobile device, this is critical. So let's dive in and take a look at how we connect this kind of to my Vercel environment. So the first thing is you can go to Vercel.com and you can just get an account started. Once you do that, what I'll do is I'll go over to my Vercel account where this application has already been added here. So this is the actual application out there. And all you'll need to do is hit the add new project. And from here, you'll connect to your GitHub environment. Once you connect to your GitHub environment, then you get to select the, uh, the repo that you're trying to connect. And here we go. I can say, I want to import Turkey Tapper. And it starts going through this process here. This is super simple. Ask ChatGPT about any of these questions that you're not sure of. I'm gonna rename it to Turkey Tapper Redo and then hit deploy. And that's pretty much all I've done. Okay, here it is. It says, congratulations, you now have this thing. It's going to deploy out. And what I'm gonna point at here is this thing called instant previews. And so this one's really important. When you push a new branch, it will create previews so that you can see a deployment of that new branch. And that is really cool. All right, here we are. We came into the, the dashboard for this object and you can see the information about it down here. It was created one minute ago, it's ready to go. We can hit this button here, which will load the application and it is officially hosted out here. Okay, so here we are back in the application and it's not quite attractive enough for me. I want kind of a monitor around it. It kind of feels like something that came from the old DOS days. So let's put a monitor around it. And I actually kind of want that glitchy feel on the front screen here, but I don't want to do this here. Let's pretend I noticed this. I was on my couch, came up with this idea and wanted to send that off. So I'm going to pull up my phone in at just showing you chat GPT here. And I'm going to go into the menu and select Codex. Codex will bring me out to the coding environment for ChatGPT. I have already selected, I've added the environment. All it is is a GitHub, same GitHub kind of integration that we saw with Vercel. And what I'm gonna do here is just ask for some changes and then submit those. And so I'm gonna let that kind of kick off and go do its thing. And while it's working, I'm gonna finish watching the game. Okay, real briefly, let's jump back to Vercel just so that I can show you. This again is the, the version of the app that we've pushed out there, the redo version of Turkey Tapper. And if you scroll up to the top, you'll see a deployments tab. When you select the deployments tab, it's probably on production. I would say set it to all environments if you're trying to follow along. We only have the one deployment and that's the one that we've already looked at. However, over here in Codex, it says that our change has been completed. So let's go into this object. Now recall, we're sitting on the couch. We're relaxing. 
the game's on in the background. We're just messing around while it's during commercial. We can read through, figure out what changes it made, and we really want to take a look at this. We don't want to have to run back down to the computer. That's the typical route. Go back down to the computer, check it all back out, pull the branch, and then verify it yourself. But not today. Because of putting it on Vercel, and because Vercel has this concept of creating kind of preview launches or builds of the application that only you can see, it's a very private environment. I really want to, to say that. It's very nice. I am going to, here on my phone, in Codex, just say, sure, I'll create a PR. When you do that, what it's doing is it's taking all of these changes, it's pushing them back up to Codex, or to GitHub, sorry about that, and it's just creating a new branch for me and a PR. When it creates a new branch, if I go in and view that PR, here it is, it's an open PR, and if we looked into the comments and the commitments that have been done, you'll see that it actually um, is the, the changes that we just requested. But what you'll see down here is two different uh, hooks against this repo. Remember, I had already done this, I showed you that in the beginning, and we created a new one. Well, this is the redo one that we've been looking at, and this is the official one, the original one. Both of them are creating a preview build out of this because they're both hooked in against this repo. So it's not just a one-to-one -one relationship. So I can click here and go directly to preview that application. If you click preview, it will take you to the Vercel application. It will authenticate you. And boy, this definitely looks different. <laughs> but this wouldn't be the place to check this application out. And why not show you what's going on back down in the browser? So now if we come down to the same page we were just looking at, this is the production version. It's been out there for 21 minutes, has not been disrupted, but our new preview build is out there for 17 seconds or a minute ago or something like that. So this is fantastic. If I go into this thing, I can then go ahead and preview this application and we should get to our crazy green one, which is kind of cool, frankly. And so this is the page that we asked for is we wanted kind of glitchy and a different UI here. And I wanted some um, emojis and things like that. So this is the version we get to. This is the change that we did from the couch. I, again, have not gone back into Claude code or cursor or anywhere else to pull code. So if I liked this, what I would do is I'd go back and I'd say, well, I kind of like this. So I'm going to merge this pull request. Once I merge this pull request, it will then deploy this against production. So if you recall back here in our deployments, here in our deployments, we have a preview build and the production build. This will rebuild once something goes on to main. It will then put it into production. So if I merge that, I don't like it quite as much as what I've got currently, so I'm not going to merge this one. It would just replace the production build, and that's kind of nice. So that was all done on the phone, all during the commercial break for the game. It's time to get back to the game. All right, and just for fun, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a high score system that will save against a super base environment, and I will post this URL in the show notes below. Feel free to go down and see if you can get a high score on this thing. It's a little mind bending, a little ridiculous. It's definitely ridiculous, let me not say a little, but I thought that might be a little bit of fun, anybody that wants to try to get their old uh, initials on the high score list. Why not? So that's it. One of uh, the comments that I got recently was asking, can you show how you do this auto preview build kind of thing? And I thought, man, that's such a great idea. May as well share that very quickly. I hope you kind of saw something from this that was new. Basically, you need GitHub. You need Vercel, which, by the way, they have a very, very good free account that you can actually get these things to deploy for low volume kind of applications that you might have for free. Quite a few of them, in fact, they have a pretty good free plan. Netlify and others do this same auto preview build kind of thing. So I don't want to say Vercel's the only one out there. It's just the one that I've moved to. I was previously using a different system and I've moved to Vercel specifically so I can check out some of these builds that I'm doing for my couch because frankly, I actually do quite a few of these. This is part of my workflow these days to ask for four or five changes on the couch and then want to check and see which one was the best one and only move that one forward and delete the rest of them. And I didn't want to have to come down to the computer every time I was asking for a small change. All right. I hope you saw something that helped. Thanks for coming along for the ride on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.